And have approval for videotaping? No, I don't. Oh, you could go to um, the city manager's office and, and get um, clarification on uh, what they allow for videotaping. And you have a policy in this uh, building? Apparently they do. They, cre they created one. So yeah, the city manager's office. There's another... Um... Well, the city manager is going to have to come tell me there's a policy to not um, okay. record in a public building. I'm a reporter. I'm investigating a public corruption claim okay. that your city planning manager is asking for bribes and I'm going to film in here all day long and I'm not going to ask permission. Okay. This is Susan Bassey, and while I typically report on California's family and criminal courts, sometimes that reporting collides not only with local government, but also with publishing and journalism. I recently received an old newspaper article out of San Francisco dating back to 2004. It was an article about a wife's allegations against her husband as he was running for San Francisco supervisor. And while mainstream media will focus on the issues related to domestic violence and the supervisor candidate's hopes for running for office while he wasn't paying his child support, I was focused on the response of Mr. Rolando Bonilla's second wife, Perla Rodriguez, who responded to a tweet that I posted about the incident dating back two decades ago. And I decided to go down to City Hall in San Jose, where Mr. Rolando Bonilla serves as a planning commissioner and is running for city council. The city of San Jose operates on a $3 billion annual budget. That's more money than most small countries have. And yet they have a history of acting like public records requests are an act of terrorism. I'm in downtown San Jose and we're doing a little investigation that has to do with public records. We're going to go inside and we're going to talk about the planning department and a planning commissioner by the name of Rolando Bonilla. Hi. My name is Susan. I'm here to get some records, and I also um, I'm a reporter. I asked for some records on Friday regarding Planning Commissioner oh, um, Rolando Bonilla. Okay, I'm sorry, I get a little flustered from some of the reporting. Is that entirely necessary? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, and you said you're with, you're a reporter with? I'm a freelancer. My name is Susan Bassey. Uh, and I'd like to speak with the city attorney about a complaint I got about one of your planning commissioners being bribed, asking for a bribe. And I'd like to see records to confirm what my source has told me. And that would be under that would be under California. And where did you send that record request? Immediately after Rolando Bonilla's wife had attacked me on Twitter and tried to claim that my reporting was inaccurate, I did a records request to the city of San Jose. And it was through that records request that I found that the wife who had attacked me on social media owned a company with Mr. Bonilla that was doing business with the city and also that had gotten federal money during the pandemic. I sent it to the, just the city and they gave me a partial production, but now I'm asking under Government Code 6253A, which allows me to inspect records, so I want to see if there's any records that I can inspect. For those who have watched my work before, you know that I fight for public records, and not just records that we get through a production, but records that in California were entitled to access and inspect during normal business hours. And yet we find over and over again governments concealing those records. I'm just wondering, what is this cart? Uh, it's, to, it's to help with mail distribution. Oh.
I spent over an hour and a half at the city that day looking for public records. I went to the city attorney's office, the city manager's office, and I went to the planning department to see what I could see about those complaints related to Rolando Bonilla, who sits on the planning commission. And while it was very difficult to find any staff to assist me or any public records, I took a look around the planning commission offices, and I was a little bit surprised to find how chaotic it seemed. There were papers everywhere, lots of equipment, but nobody there using it, and taxpayers had paid for all of this that just seemed to be going to waste. There were a lot of packages that were out and files that seemed disorganized. So I walked around and I looked a bit, and I happened to notice that there were also dirty dishes left by employees who weren't even present. And there were stacks of San Jose Mercury newspapers that appeared to have been part of a subscription that taxpayers had paid, but nobody was reading these papers. And there were thousands of postcards that taxpayers had paid to send to give notice, and yet they had all been returned which means somebody's not keeping very good records. Well, it seemed difficult to find some of those employees to help me with my records. I seemed to have no trouble finding people who wanted to tell me about an informal recording policy. All day long. Okay. But what, you should be letting somebody know, that's all. Why is that, ma'am? This is a public building. Well, I don't know why you came all the way over here to tell me I can't film. And have approval for videotaping? No, I don't. Uh, you could go to um, the city manager's office and and get um, clarification on uh, what they allow. office and and get um, clarification on uh, what they allow for videotaping. What is your name? In a public building. I'm a reporter. I'm investigating a public corruption claim okay. that your city planning manager is asking for bribes and I'm gonna film in here all day long and I'm not gonna ask permission. Okay, Let, let's, uh, okay, great, thank you. Local governments are not only less transparent when they don't comply with the Public Records Act, but also when their employees implement informal policies and procedures that deny the public, for any reason, access to information, and those policies might include policies about recording in a public building with a $3 billion annual budget. You may remember at the beginning of this video, when I entered this building, I walked through this same area. I recorded all the expensive art, and I even gave somebody some information off camera. This woman wasn't afraid of me. She wasn't concerned about my recording, until the woman from the other department had walked all the way over here to tell her that I was recording in public. Thank you. Um, I also have a mail that was just handed over to me. Someone mailed an employee badge back. I don't know where they lost it, but okay. Thank you. Hi, are they coming down? I, I'm not aware of them. I, okay. I so, I mean, I'm a reporter. I'm investigating public corruption and that your planning commissioner has asked for bribes. I'm going to record in here. And if someone's made a policy that I can't, I need them to come and tell me about that. Okay, thanks. I'm documenting this. I'm a reporter. I'm investigating a public corruption um, complaint that I got. And I was down filming in the planning commissioner's area and also in the lobby. And someone told me you guys have a policy about no recording in the building. So I want to see that policy, if that's true. Okay. 
and after an hour and a half at the city, all I was able to find were records related to a mail distribution cart. So that would be a fail for the city of San Jose where my public records are concerned. It took the entire city attorney's office over an hour. They still didn't give me access to the records. Nobody even answered me. And then when I started recording in the lobby, they call, came in and they called security because I was recording in violation of some policy. So this is a very large city government that doesn't know how to comply with the Public Records Act, but they know how to make policies to prevent people from recording them in a public building. When individuals working for the government obstruct, delay, alter, or conceal public records, they commit a crime. But the people in charge of that crime would be the local law enforcement, which includes the police and the district attorney. And in Santa Clara County, that would be Jeff Rosen, the district attorney, and he never does anything about public corruption, which involves local government and the courts. As I left the city hall that day, I was frustrated because sometimes it can feel like our government is getting too big and lacks the transparency and accountability that we're all entitled to. But I ran into a new cafe that had opened just down the block, and I was amazed that nobody was upset that I was recording them, and several people were very excited to show me what was on the menu, and they did have some mean-looking avocado toast. Downtown San Jose. What's the name of the restaurant? Azúcar. Azúcar. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So for all the city, county, and state workers out there who work hard to do your job, thank you for your work. Just please remember that it is our job to watch the government that employs you, and someday you may be grateful for that. And it is also the job of a publisher to watch other publishers. So when I learned that Rolando Bonilla's wife sat on the board of a local online newspaper, I decided that I'm going to have to be more diligent, even if it means that I have to see some of these publishers in court.